Since the dawn of the Middle Ages, peasants harvested the Earth's resources, raised prosperous kingdoms, and launched crusades to politely discuss their differences. But what if kingdoms developed in Minecraft? It all began a couple months ago. After making a video about how civilizations would develop in Minecraft, you guys wanted me to create an experiment to test my theories out. We pushed the limits of human nature a little too far. Starvation and war wiped out 97% of the world's population, but it left me unsatisfied. What if there were interactions? driven by something other than fear, something like trade, diplomacy, innovation. And after multiple failed experiments, it is my pleasure to announce that we at Match Incorporated have found another formula to simulate civilization in Minecraft. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the plan is simple. Just like the real world, all my peasants have one life. We'll be born into five different biomes, each with a special advantage that other regions lack. We've also added proximity chat to simulate realistic human interactions and scatter lawless vikings throughout the land. Will regions work together to form a prosperous empire, or will they once again be driven to extinction? Now sit back, relax, and let's go on a journey back in time. There are five unique territories. The first is the Plains countryside. This area had enough resources for everyone, so the people were a lot more willing to cooperate with each other. They began plans for world conquest, one loaf of bread at a time. Things were going so well, they even began singing a national anthem while working. Next, we have the desert, a slightly more difficult place to live. To survive, the population had to use what little the desert provided. They dug trenches in the sand and kept mobs at a distance with bows made from dead bushes. I guess they didn't have much entertainment either, because the people forced a random guy into a glass box to become their oracle. I am the oracle, ask me. Uh, what's the meaning of life? Third, we have the swamp. Because of the wet terrain, the people adopted new forms of transportation. They traveled on boats and brewed potions of leaping to traverse the land by tree. Maybe they got a little too creative, because a weird cross appeared in the sky, making me slightly question their sanity. Fourth is the snow tundra. Its trade routes to the swamp, plains, and desert make it a strategic choke point. That is, if they can manage to make this place inhabitable. At first, the people tried to grow wheat in sub-zero conditions, but failed, so they turned to the next best solution, exploiting the local natives for their resources. Lastly, there's the mountains. With extraordinary heights and abundant caves, the mountains had the most ores out of all the regions, so the people quickly moved to develop a mining industry. Thus, the first living spaces were carved into the mountains, and a citadel began to form near the summit. Some miners worked day and night, extracting as much iron as possible, while others waited to share the fruits of their labor. Little did I know that this was just the peaceful beginnings of a tale of great tragedy. With criminals on the loose, societies came together to maintain order. The swamp people united around a council of three nobles. They called themselves the Republic of Algenbrew. The first meeting was called to investigate the suspicions of a few civilians. Witchcraft. I just wanted to discuss where you got these diamonds, just out of curiosity. Sparty Eater defended himself, claiming that it was an art passed down through generations called the Technique, my guy. However, the mob was not taking any chances. You either give us the gear or we execute you. That's how this is gonna go. Things quickly escalated when an angry citizen decided to take matters into their own hands. We stole our diamond. That. Die. The chase was on. Potion, potion. Potion. They cornered him in the outskirts of society. On half a heart from poison, Sparty Eater hid in the trees. Cut down every tree you see. Yeah, guys, go back to the farm. Yeah, go back. Everyone back in the boat and head back. A few days later, What? That was easy. <laughs> the Plains had a young leader named Eggcat quickly rise to power after pulling out an entire Google document for his speech. And a sea of raging northern and vikings alike will attempt to tear through our lands. We will break through the gates, fortresses, and prevail over all. Five hours later. We, the people of the Plains Nation, will gather together, raise our weapons higher than ever, win this event, and walk home with a larger reputation. After winning the election, Eggcat enacted a policy of mandatory volunteering to have a statue of himself raised and drafted soldiers for a cavalry unit. In the mountains, both peasants and nobles feared that a seasoned warrior named Clown Pierce would try to forcefully take power. So instead, they rallied around a friendly commoner named Hungary as their king, who became popular after promising riches in exchange for people's support. Hey, where's the Legends say he's still waiting for that gold. To quell a potential rebellion, Clown was appointed as the general of the Mountain Kingdom.
In the desert, a ruthless queen named Minachi was unanimously appointed as the ruler of the desert monarchy. We have the advantage, we have the long range, we have the distance. All we need to do is fortify our base. It didn't take long for her strength to be tested. After the region took casualties in the mines, civil unrest began to spread. So Yanachi promoted religion, making people pray to the oracle for answers. It was genius. Instead of blaming the queen for their problems, the people could just pray to the oracle. Everything was going according to plan until one fateful night, disaster shook the land. This is truly a sign from God. Like this. It's a sign oh from God. The traitor was quickly made into a scapegoat for the region's hardships. Sacrifice you to the flame god. Unfortunately in the north, the civilian population was wiped out by mobs, leaving the region with vicious fighters who were unpredictable. On the verge of collapse, a mercenary named Rooster took control through force and united the unruly group. However, the dwindling native population forced them to focus on gathering food rather than higher psychological needs, leading them to be one of the few regions to become unhappy. Sensing weakness, angry Vikings appeared at the border, prompting the Snow Dictatorship to prepare for battle. Battle, arming their soldiers with tridents and holding the natives hostage as their personal blacksmiths. Rumors of the Snow Region's villager rights violations soon began to spread throughout the land. With every region establishing a form of rule, an era of prosperity was ushered in. The Mountain Kingdom was now one of the most advanced regions. They paved roads connecting their citadel and the heights to their farming settlement on the ground. Their head engineer Yoda Badger even invented a way to reach their mines faster. Guys, tell the people that I'm coming and- Oh my god, this is, this is awesome. What? Is this a secret bunker you guys have? I just fell again. It's my will. How do you guys get back up? I don't know. I wasn't the one that made you this. You don't. To celebrate their progress, the mountain people gather at their shrine and held a coronation for their king, Hungary. At 450 Central European time, Hungary, you shall be coronated as Emperor of the Mountain. <laughs> He's not hungry anymore. He's not hungry anymore. I, He's not hungry. He's not hungry. He has food. But this wouldn't be the medieval era without the bubonic plague. And what better patient zero than the king himself? Everyone within two blocks was immediately infected, and the plague quickly spread among the population. Unfortunately, because of the slowness effect the plague gave, the disease didn't spread to any other regions. The Vikings around the world began to move. Some decided to terrorize regions by burning forests to the ground, claiming that they were quote, scorched earth tactics, while others decided to become nomadic, exploring the vast lands. A clever group of Vikings even decided to form a cult, telling you to consider subscribing if you want to see more experiments like this. In Alcumbrew, construction on the massive ziggurat finished, becoming a symbol of power and dominance. It was the pride of the swamp people, representing how civilization could develop in even the most unlikely places. They even started building a town inside of the ziggurat to help hide refugees and shelter the homeless. While their workers rested, the council drafted a plan known as Operation Bad Company to expand their influence by stealing from rich kingdoms and supplying potions to the poor. Meanwhile, in the desert monarchy, the queen decides to become more compassionate. She invest some time into honoring her fallen subjects with graves and even allowed for artists to express themselves through abstract art. We have medieval art, it's like modern art but medieval, it's over here. I know the that Diorite is considered the worst block in Minecraft. That just symbolizes how everyone thought your region was the worst, but really, it has its own uses. Exactly. You are so oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. You very oh good yeah, oh magic. yeah. They also began digging a giant moat to prepare for invaders and began harnessing the power of redstone in hopes of taking the medieval era to new heights. Literally. Back in Russia, the Vikings held a Thanksgiving dinner together. Let us all say grace and thank God for this food, yes. We don't believe yeah. in God. Let us thank science for this <laughs> food. Yes, yes. Quite delightful. Good music. Some nearby snow citizens got curious and wanted in on the festivities, and the two groups ended up developing a weird friendship together.
I thought they were having a bit too much fun as enemies, so I hit him with the bubonic plague. Get it from get it from get away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. I got the plague. Who? I got the plague. I got the plague. I can't see. I can't see. I can't see. I'm gonna kill you. Wait, we don't have milk. We don't even have milk. Although they didn't want to be near each other now, they would soon have plenty of quality time together. So with the mountains recovering from the plague, desert testing out new technologies, and Vikings being everything but actual Vikings, the stage was set for kingdoms to clash. In hopes of becoming more prosperous, traders began to venture outside to discover what other kingdoms had to offer. The Plains Cavalry embarked on a journey to expand their bread empire and end up making contact with the desert monarchy. The desert was wary of outsiders, so they allowed only one person inside for negotiations. Together, they struck a trade deal as the Plains agreed to exchange their wheat for the desert's bows. And with the desert's food supply now dependent on them, the Plains secured themselves an ally. The desert monarchy sent off their newly invented flying machines to deliver their goods to the Plains. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> good luck. Oh, the border. The border hit it? Yeah. Bye, guys. Good luck. Low-key scary, dude. <laughs> I'm very scared. But unfortunately, the desert didn't have any safety standards. No, 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 no. Okay, you're good. Gonna make you're it. good. I'm gonna make it. That was close. We can just... We don't have to order bucket clutch. <laughs> After finishing up trade, the other desert pilot also fell to his death. So for 10 pieces of bread, the desert ended up sacrificing both of their planes, all their cargo, and two lives. With the flying machines stranded at their border, the plane civilian's curiosity gets the better of them. But as soon as they got the planes working, they also quickly realized their grave mistake. <laughs> Maybe people weren't meant to discover flight in the medieval era. In the north, a move that would change the course of history took place. After meeting at a Viking-controlled island, the Vikings decided to assimilate with the Snow Kingdom. Those who didn't agree with this plan fled to various civilizations, spreading warnings of the new coalition. These rumors sparked fears as kingdoms saw the Snow Dictatorship lead a giant army of anarchists and Vikings. The Swamp Republic, fearing an attack, quickly sent one of their council members to the Mountain Kingdom for negotiations. The warning is that the ice spikes are incredibly aggressive. They've already started like pushing against us. Really? We have brought a lot of gifts unique to our side. The catch is we want resources. Our area has little to no actual iron. I know. Hello, this is, this is why we came to you. The Mountain Region accepted their trade deal, but denied their request for military help as they wanted to remain isolationist. They were farther from the snow region so they didn't see them as much of a threat. They were so confident in their military strength they even offered the swamp become their subordinates in exchange for protection. We are a um, people of science so we have no religious Okay, maybe that was a bad word for it. Um, basically, the swamp would become like under us. The mountain leader would not compromise on his offer of budget slavery. Negotiations had failed. While the rest of the world braced for conflict, the Snow Viking Coalition were actually completely unaware of their public perception, as they didn't have any diplomats, only fighters. They saw the mountains as a threat to their power, with large stashes of iron, so the Snow King won them annihilated immediately. After returning from a resource gathering expedition, they sent out messengers to find some allies for their military campaign. Whoever controlled the swamp could cut off the mountain people's access to the rest of the world, making them the first kingdom to approach. Look ahead of us. Oh! Oh, what is that? What is that? It's a wall. Guys, we're, here guys, in peace. Guys. we're here in peace. But due to their reputation, the swamp believed that they were under attack. Wait, wait, wait. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming. They're, they're coming, they're coming. They're allied with mountain, we're free. The Snow King Rooster was infuriated and began to mobilize his forces for invasion. From a simple misunderstanding, war was on the horizon. With their movements hidden by the terrain, the Snow Army caught the swamp off guard. Hey, hey! They're here! Jump them! Jump them! The wall fell, and the swamp nation quickly retreated back to their ziggurat, hoping to use the high ground to their advantage. Oh my god, someone is coming to battle for the ziggurat. Retreating. We will have to continue this conversation later. One of our members was just killed by an arrow, so... Swamp's being attacked. Okay. Stay, stay to the top! Let them come to us! Let them come to us! Go land circle! Me, you're hitting me! The siege raged on as the swamp controlled the top of the ziggurat. The Snow Coalition restocked their food supply on the ground and relentlessly continued their assault. Oh my god, the swamp are being massacred. 
Unfortunately, the force was not with them. Outnumbered and outgeared, the snow army slowly closed in from all sides. The pride of the swamp civilization was lost. A few refugees, in fear of being captured, hid underground and escaped to warn the others of what had happened. What if you get caught captive? I really doubt I they hope. keep captives. Yeah. Let's just get to mind. Let's not think about it. The Snow Army made an example of the Alcambru Republic, burning down their forests, looting their homes, and sacrificing gold blocks to the gods. But unfortunately for them, this victory would not come without consequences, as news of the war reached the ears of not only the mountains, but the plains and desert nations, confirming their fears that the Snow Kingdom had become bloodthirsty warmongers. If left unchecked, they could become too powerful to defy. The Mountain Kingdom was put on high alert, which was terrible timing for a Viking who tried to assassinate the Mountain General Clown Pierce. Okay, I'm cause problems on purpose. Die, Clown Pierce! Oh, I'm assassinating you! Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm yeah. <laughs> Wow. Nice. He probably shouldn't have announced his assassination plan to his target. They began building defenses, creating outposts to monitor incoming threats. Wait, you littered the floor with water while they have a Riptide 3 trident? The Plains Democracy and Desert Monarchy also met up and agreed that it was time for a crusade, so they united their forces and made their way north to avenge the swamp. On the voyage there, a snow messenger was encountered. Shoot him. Shoot him. Get him. Oh, Shoot him. Oh god. But the Crusades wait for no one. Upon arrival, their scouts discovered that the Snow Army was still occupying the swamp, so they began to advance there. Meanwhile, the Snow King Rooster and a group of his Vikings decide to seek out allies in the south before going to war with the mountains. But unaware of his messenger's death, he was heading straight into an ambush. Oh, Oh my god, it's full out war. That was mad. Retreating, they retreated. They retreated. Oh, in a crucial blunder, the Snow King fell in battle. He's lagging, he's lagging, just kill him. My wife, I could have. It was a textbook mistake in the art of war. Never trust Comcast internet. In complete disarray, the Snow Army was left scattered across the map with no leader, hiding in the pits as the Southern Alliance marched to the Ziggurat without resistance. In the midst of the chaos, the Snow King's right-hand man, Scarecrow, decides to take command and attempt to regroup with the rest of his soldiers. Unfortunately, he had a terrible sense of direction. Oh, I see them! Oh. They're here! That's a lot of danger. What are they doing? Like, Is there more of them, or...? Wait, you guys, you guys actually went to the mountains? Yeah, we're stupid! Oh, oh my- As the final soldiers regrouped near the ziggurat, they prepared to launch an assault to retake the swamp. Just as conflict was about to break out- Putting past the differences that you guys killed our leader. That's a big one. The Snow Army tries to clear the misunderstanding and pin the blame on the mountains. They're all over there. If you guys haven't seen, they're, they're on a mountain with a ton of bows right now. And they're going to hit down on us. We go there ourselves, we might die. If the leader go there, you guys will die. How can we trust you? Tensions were high. The alliance meets at the base of the Ziggurat to discuss the Snow Army's proposal. Seeing their opposition's military might firsthand, the alliance's resolve began to waver. We have come to peace. We can all let them win. Also, as killing your leader, I'm gonna give your leader a back. With cries for blood, the embers of the First World War began to burn. Unbeknownst to the mountain nation, the weight of the entire world was about to descend upon their land. Those That's no hurt. use! What is this? Arrows rained down from above, forcing the Alliance to return fire. As they swarm the hills, the mountains quickly retreat back to their second wall. Just complaining, stop complaining and fight. Stop, stop complaining and focus. The Alliance swarms the outskirts and the mountains attempt to maintain control of the wall. But it was no use. The wall was soon overwhelmed and the Mountain King calls for a retreat, sacrificing Clown Pierce to buy his soldiers time. Oh, push, they're retreating. They're retreating. Push, push, push. As intruders poured into their land, the Mountain Army climbs up the heights they once called home for one last time. Surrounded at the top, with enemies closing in from all sides, it was all but over for the Mountain Nation. As their enemies celebrated the death of the Mountain General, a stroke of genius came to the Mountain King. He acted Activate the redstone and dropped into the abyss with his people. And now, go, go, go. now, come on, come on, now, cover, 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 get out of the water. What is this, boys? Guys, don't go down the river, boy. Okay, run. Run up. <laughs> 
Underground, the mountain people were at an advantage, knowing the cave systems like the back of their hand. As reinforcements poured in, the World Alliance frantically searched for a safer entrance to the mines, but the mountain people had a different plan in mind. Operation Underground Railroad had commenced. One by one, the mountain people fled the region. Traversing land and sea, the mountain remnants trekked across the world to the plains, who they believed to still be friendly. They soon realized their mistake. With their backs against the wall, they decided to seek out the help of a friend in the desert. But on the way there... Run! No! They're right above us. It's never gonna work. right above us, you know, they, they all know. Do you guys want to have a civilized conversation? Do you want food? I have food. I'll drop it down the hole. I swear I won't go down. The whole team doesn't know you're here. Yeah. Wait, that, they, they're down they here? They literally went down there, yeah. Scarecrow, right, Scarecrow, they're down here. Drop it to you. TNT, TNT, you Do you want to live? I'm guessing, but no, actually, no, you have to die. So, huh? Sacrificed for a more peaceful world, the Mountain Nation's legacy was no more. The leaders returned and justified their war efforts to their people, reporting stories of the hostile swamp people and evil mountain kingdom. With the actual survivors remember that even with the greatest leaders, armies, and plans, all it took was a single misunderstanding to start a world war.